Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship, Mile. Thank you very, very much to uh, Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship for inviting me to uh, uh, to have this discussion today. Uh, I want to uh, um, apologize for one thing, which is I, I really don't know the various uh, levels of uh, development of the participants in the call. And so if some of this uh, seems uh, a little simplistic, uh, I apologize for this. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, I think we can move along pretty quickly. Um, and uh, I have uh, organized this in a, a sort of a flow that uh, that uh, uh, first of all uh, speaks to what is supply chain management, and then uh, and what is supply chain performance, and then how do we uh, plan and control and measure it? How do we include and incorporate internal and external supply chain elements, and what are the next improvement opportunities afoot? We uh, uh, certain certain organizations are farther along the, the supply chain management development spectrum than others, for sure. Uh, and uh, uh, you may you may see yourself uh, much farther along or less far along. We can discuss this uh, in the questions and answers. So why why does supply chain performance so often degrade over time? What are some of the common pitfalls, and are your teams looking at the whole picture? Are you able to integrate strategy with tactics and logistics across the resource life cycles? And finally, how can you optimize and continuously improve supply chain performance across your organization uh, and uh, with a sustainable model? as well as how can you incorporate the practical realities of sourcing markets and demand dynamics. This, this slide is a, sim a very, very simple illustration of uh, what are supply chains. Not everyone has the same point of view, uh, but uh, most of the supply chain focus, management focus, in fact, has been on when and where the products or services are available and where are they needed. And so that's really the distribution uh, element uh, shown on the lower right side of this screen. There are, of course, uh, several other stages to the supply chain. And some organizations have reached uh, further forward in the process as well as further, further uh, uh, backward in the process to incorporate questions such as how are the products and services prepared or performed uh, at the front end and who in fact are the suppliers uh, and then at the back end who, who really are the customers there are further stages that are uh, certainly uh, being addressed in some supply chain management structures. Uh, and in fact, some of the questions begin to change. So in the center, for example, of, of this uh, slide, you can, we might ask ourselves, who are the best suppliers? Not only who are the suppliers, and uh, from the customer standpoint, who are the best customers? Uh, these begin to ask questions that are not isolated to supply chain management. And this is a significant point because it's the integration of supply chain management with the overall enterprise management that becomes uh, kind of the leading edge for uh, further development. Uh, where are the significant improvement opportunities? In addition, uh, some organizations have done well to begin addressing on the left side where are the best alternative sources of supply uh, 
beyond the supplier, uh, let's say distributor or or uh, uh, manufacturer, and what do the users, the end users, actually seek, and even what do they really need? We recently, uh, well, a few years ago, did the, the. I was working with Compass Group PLC, and we performed the catering functions for all of the. Asian games that took place in Doha, Qatar, and <clears throat> we we actually had to ask ourselves many of these questions that were far beyond uh, simply the distribution of the uh, food and non-food products to the Asian games. Uh, in that case, we had uh, several thousand SKUs uh, types of uh, product that we had to deliver. Much of it had to come from very far uh, away locations, uh, from Korea, from South America, from uh, certain parts of uh, South Asia even. And we, we definitely had to, uh, we, we had 45 to 60 day uh, over the water logistics, as well as the customs and, uh, and other local logistics in Doha just uh, to keep the cold chain uh, in good order and to uh, uh, to get the products delivered to the venues. So what is really supply chain performance as we define it now? Uh, it measures not only the supply chain and its respective costs, uh, but also the, the cost that it affects and the opportunities that it generates. The costs of the supply chain infrastructure, of course, are the, are the shipping costs, the transportation and warehousing costs, uh, as well as the uh, uh, logistics of services around these. Then the, 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 uh, uh, the cost that affects, though, can be six to seven times higher than those costs. And these are the, I call them here, frictional costs of waste and opportunity losses that the infrastructure itself generates. These can be in the form of idle or surplus inventories, uh, aging inventories, early or late deliveries, incorrect products and services. Finally, the um, improvement opportunities that the infrastructure enables are, uh, are, are cases where because of having the logistical structure, we may find there are opportunities to, uh, uh, to, to actually improve the economics of the uh, ordering process and of the products that are ordered uh, or services, and uh, this is what we mean. I'm not really addressing this in the, la the third point in much depth here because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lengthy discussion. So what are the real challenges uh, and the principal shortcomings of current management models? I see them as the following five points. Uh, first of all, it's, a, it's been a very predominant focus on products and a very insufficient focus on services. Even though the services, if you add them all together, they represent uh, two-thirds to three-quarters of the total cost. And, uh, and yet the supply chain models, the predominant supply chain models, tend to focus on the products themselves, whether it be food or furniture or, uh, or you know, whatever products there may be. Secondly, it's really pretty much one-dimensional. So by this I mean that the activities in the process are pretty much isolated and fragmented and self-referential, meaning uh, that they're, 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 touch, they're addressing the functions they immediately touch, but they're not really addressing the whole supply chain and it, the extended supply chain and uh, the opportunities that that may produce. You still frequently, too frequently, hear comments such as, well, that's not my job, that's someone else's job, 
and so uh, not my problem. Uh, clearly, a lot of these, a lot of the, a lot of this is caused by uh, uh, or, uh, oriented around supplier convenience, and uh, the suppliers would just as soon keep it very, very fragmented and isolated. Uh, but believe me, the suppliers themselves are very well organized around understanding the uh, the uh, uh, disjointed cases and where they can make a uh, an extra uh, uh, extra margins. Thirdly, uh, it's very static. The, the models tend to be very static, uh, rigid, and be therefore un unsustainable in a dynamic market. And a little bit tied to that is that the models tend to be very much organized around transactions. That is the deal, or I need to get product A from point A to point B, and uh, uh, not really looking at other products who, who that may need to uh, uh, move from the same points or other points uh, at the same time. Finally, and probably most importantly, the metrics for management are uh, generally pretty weak, sometimes fuzzy, and sometimes really non-existent. Uh, there are many good models and dashboards that have been developed for uh, focusing attention on supply chain management, and uh, these should be employed as appropriate for your organization. This illustration, now I'm on page uh, eight, uh, this, this illustration actually uh, summarizes these uh, gaps that I mentioned, and it reframes it in terms of the individual or the, the people who are and functions that tend to be involved in various aspects of the life cycle, the life cycle being uh, from planning through sourcing and logistics uh, to control, and then uh, at a strategic level versus a tactical or project level versus at the resource level. And clearly, uh, to me at least, uh, the isolated activity and accountability significant lim significantly limit performance improvement efforts. There's a lot of channel conflict. That's my comment about uh, not my job, uh, needless complexity, significant gaps. Uh, and then in the case of supply chain management, this is magnified further by the suppliers in the marketplace, particularly when you get to um, uh, blue water supply, you, you, you have very, very few options for uh, suppliers. Uh, sometimes only one, and um, again, as I mentioned earlier, these suppliers uh, actually gain a great deal of margin by the uh, disjointed uh, 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 organization that some companies have uh, within themselves, and they're very good at exploiting this. So what are the opportunities? or what are the most important additional opportunities? First of all, uh, models that encompass both products and services. This to me is, um, is a very important point, and it, uh, because of what I said earlier, where services are uh, really represent nearly uh, uh, sometimes 75%, two-thirds to 75% of the overall cost. Secondly, uh, integrated models that incorporate financial and operational uh, aspects as well as the commercial dimensions, addressing the extended supply chain organization, and I'll show you an example in a moment um, that where, where, where in, in attention to this matter is really, really, uh, can really, really be costly. And finally, both the uh, 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 product and service life cycles. And I'll just give a quick example 
of this. Uh, a lot of uh, I've done a lot of sourcing of uh, uh, furniture for companies, and frequently, of course, they simply want to sell the product. Uh, often they will include the respective services that go along with that, not only the transportation distribution, but also the, uh, the, the installation and training that goes along with the proper uh, installation for the users. But very, very few will incorporate the disposition of these products as they run through their life cycles and the redeployment of those products to other use, uh, and this is this is uh, there's some real uh, leverage and advantage to incorporating these factors. Thirdly, uh, uh, dynamic models, and so what I mean by this is including strategic sourcing, the whole process from strategic sourcing through marketing, including a robust range of alternatives. Very frequently, the supply chain management does not uh, really consider alternatives. What I mean by this is it's not really linked in the same uh, to the opportunities that, that can be produced through a more strategic sourcing connection with the supply chain logistics. And we found a great many opportunities in this space. Uh, because a, a small change in specifications may uh, offer tremendous opportunities for cost and timeliness, as well as even customer service quality. The fourth point is linked across strategy, tactics, and logistics. Uh, the, and the fifth is about metrics and accountability. I mentioned that I would uh, show a few. So, so this you might think of as the objectives that, and I'm going to come back to this in a moment. Uh, and and the the next point is about context. Actually, context to me is one of the most important, maybe the most important aspect of incorporating in uh, advanced supply chain models. Uh, many of the plans I've seen fail due to poor understandings of context. So a rich understanding of these details is a, is a critical success factor and offers many opportunities as well, uh, although most are seen in the negative, and I'll come back to touch on that as well. So here are just a few examples of financial services company uh, filled a warehouse with standard forms thinking they could um, maybe use them over time and save some money due to uh, a, large order, a large, large order size. Uh, trans shipping costs far exceeded the expected savings. Many forms became obsolete before they, and, and many could not even be located in their inventory system. We ended up having 54 large trucks of waste at a write-off of several hundred thousand dollars due to this kind of planning. The second is a communications organization that ordered a shipment of Whiteout. I don't know if you're familiar with Whiteout. It's a, it's a product that used to be used. It's still available, but it used to be used when people used uh, typewriters to, to type and uh, you could you could uh, uh, type you could put it on the paper and then type over it with uh, replacement words. <laughs> and this this company had ordered a huge order for one small location. It filled nearly 10 cubic meters of space, storage space, which was enough for probably a thousand years if if, if the technology hadn't changed. And then, it, 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 besides that, it has to be disposed of uh, with environmental requirements, which cost far far more than the product. But a, but the lady who ordered it did get a nice trip for her family to Hawaii. The third, third example is uh, an educational institution that was continuously ordering very large quantities of new glassware for its cafeterias, nearly one per cover. 
uh, and it was uh, supposed to be due to expected breakage. All of the delivery notes ordered, matched the orders and invoices and were paid routinely, uh, but there was very little evidence of the actual breakage, and the glassware inventories never changed. So they just uh, simply disappeared. The fourth one here is a retailing company that had 34 reefers, uh, refrigerated containers detained by customs for 20 months. This was in West uh, Africa. Uh, due to package labeling that became non-compliant only during the shipment. Complete loss of all the products, but not identified uh, as, a, as a loss for this 20-month period. Of course, all the product inside was, was uh, completely obsolete, and uh, the product had to be replaced, as well as the loss on the initial order. Finally, uh, a catering company needed to ship to chilled halal products to Mecca during Ramadan in 44 degrees Celsius conditions, uh, but the non-Muslim drivers were uh, barred during the last stage of delivery. All of these are solvable, and uh, but they're much, much easier to solve in advance. And these are summarized, that is, the objectives I mentioned and the contextual uh, aspects are summarized on this slide. And so what are the objectives and the context? And how do these frame the criteria that should be applied uh, or considered, sorry, in the, in the models that you develop? First of all, the objectives, uh, which here I call opportunities, uh, to be dynamic, to be scalable, accountable, sustainable, and transparent, as well as to incorporate life cycle factors as appropriate. And then contextually, the transport, of course, the transportation and storage infrastructures, security, health and safety, environmental factors, regulatory factors, and uh, cultural and language factors. Um, and so, and these combine to uh, define uh, common optimization criteria. These differ by organization, but uh, basically they're covering several uh, dimensions of the, uh, the management spectrum, operational, commercial, financial, organizational, and managerial, and then also cross-referencing, uh, kind of transparency and intelligence, leverage and continuous improvement, uh, modularity and flexibility, and uh, risk mitigation. And so now this is illustrating a, a holistic approach to the integration of strategy, sourcing, and teamwork uh, that, uh, that often can produce creative and robust solutions. And this is the same diagram that we illustrated on the earlier page and more focused now on kind of some of the tools that can be used conventional tools in some cases that can be applied to make sure these links are communicating and structurally uh, set up, set up uh, in alignment. Uh, first of all, between sourcing and logistics and the control function, uh, budget and accountability and incentive structures, value engineering programs, the joint venture, the merger and the C business solutions in this space. Then between the sourcing and logistics uh, tactically and to the resource level, uh, competitive rate cards, SLAs, contracts and monitoring tools, and inventory and demand management tools. This reaches now, of course, to the, to the uh, end user in many cases uh, when it comes to demand management, 
but we find that there's a great deal of uh, opportunity to uh, to to modify the specifications if you can illustrate the uh, the the economics and benefits of doing that. We did have a request one time recently for um, uh, no fat butter on a on a, a catering operation and um, said we we don't know what that is and we actually uh, we actually uh, were able to find a solution <laughs> uh, this this uh, slide is illustrating some of the tools that would be useful in um, in bridging across uh, from planning it, uh, to sourcing and logistics, or vice versa, uh, at the tactical and resource level, meaning uh, inventory supplier and contract valuations, market research and metrics, and benchmarks, and financing alternatives. This also might come to uh, e uh, e-ordering uh, operation uh, types of um, uh, tools, uh, and and that's uh, uh, there are opportunities here as well. This applies often much more in the capital space, where uh, uh, for larger products of equipment uh, and, and uh, things like furniture. And then uh, in the linkage between uh, sourcing, logistics, and planning, at uh, kind of linking the strategic to the tactical level, uh, baseline profiles, keeping track of uh, hyper segmentation and target marketing programs, and kind of master plans. And then connecting kind of all the parts together. Uh, some of the tools that we employ are uh, process and performance audits, demand, uh, dynamic demand, capacity and market models and forecasts, and organization engineering solutions, as well as risk control programs and continuous performance improvement programs. So as a recap, uh, supply chain optimization is a very neglected aspect of And at the same time, it offers some of the best opportunities to generate substantial and sustained performance improvement. Most organizations really do not clearly understand the value of their capacity and the range of their future needs or the full economics and dynamics and cross opportunities of the supply and demand markets. Clearly, uh, to me, supply chain performance is a critical part of enterprise performance, overall enterprise performance, that frequently degrades due to outdated static and fragmented management across the extended life cycle. Users uh, frequently consider supply chain only in terms of their shortcomings. Uh, companies respond then to this dilemma by overinvesting or overordering uh, just in case we might need it. Uh, certainly this has improved significantly over the last 10-15 uh, years, but it's still way too, uh, way too prevalent and there are great opportunities for improving that. Finally, uh, most users and advisors and suppliers and, and all the intermediaries have very, very limited perspectives. Few have real insight into the pain implications, commodity aggregation or substitution opportunities. These are the alternatives that I mentioned earlier. And even fewer understand life cycle, economic performance, or strategic implications. So the best approach to optimizing and continuously improving supply chain performance is a comprehensive model that accounts for uh, contributions to enterprise success, that is linking the parts to the whole. Uh, 
this is simply a um, a uh, summary model that uh, that that illustrates the the kind of five key elements to preparing a uh, a sustainable supply chain optimization engine uh, and it really includes five parts as I mentioned uh, the planning the sourcing and logistics and the control but most importantly the glue that holds it together the management information systems that link the information from all those parts those uh, stages with the ta talent and organization alignment and th by this I mean for the extended value chain uh, and this is uh, th this is a diagrammatic illustration of, of that planning is really ensuring in advance that the needs are effectively specified at the lowest possible cost the sourcing and logistics then designing and executing competitive leverage relationships to deliver world-class resources at the preferred location time quality cost levels and control maintaining long-term cost and quality management I'd like to uh, close my comments with just a quick um, high-level diagnostic checklist that you might consider where is your organization on the supply chain development spectrum and where does it need to go next these are these are often the questions that we ask uh, at the outset of a, of a discussion has the organization defined its supply chain policies procedures standards and performance objectives and criteria are they measured uh, and so that means also of course has to have the metrics been defined secondly how well are they aligned and integrated with enterprise performance criteria so cutting across sourcing and contract management uh, marketing and overall uh, management of the enterprise thirdly does the organization have the systems and structures and mechanisms to manage supply chain performance optimization and even though some have these systems and structures they don't apply them so does does it apply them are they applied are they basically used for performance management across the extended supply chain fourthly are our supply chain accountabilities clearly and consistently defined measured and quote actions across the whole extended supply chain and does the team work meaning does the team work together um, as opposed to in isolated uh, um, silos another one is how well does the organization identify motivated reward innovation opportunities one of the things that we've found we have to implement is a system to really gather uh, in a systematic way the ideas that are available throughout the extended supply chain to apply to improving the overall supply chain often these are kind of kept quiet uh, because there's no mechanism for their communication across the enterprise so this might be it might even be a, a truck driver uh, or it might be a, a, a building engineer who knows exactly what could uh, what could save a lot of time and money and uh, uh, improve the timeliness of the logistics but the, but they simply haven't been asked and they don't have a mechanism for communicating it as well intentioned as they may be and so I'd like to uh, kind of wrap up at this point and uh, turn turn the discussion back please to um, uh, to Ali and uh, we can have any questions or answers
Well, thank you very much, Mr. Shelley. So, folks, we are open for the question and answer. So if you have any questions, you could either put your questions in the question box or you could raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on your console and we can uh, uh, we can give you an opportunity to speak to the speaker. I can unmute your microphone. So any questions you have, uh, please put it in the question box. Apparently, we have no questions so far at the moment, so we'll wait. Or anything you would like to add, um, uh, Mr. Service, before any questions popped up? Uh, no, but I, I really do wish to thank you and the, all of you, the, the audience, to uh, for the for the opportunity to uh, prepare these comments, and uh, I hope that they may be useful to you in uh, wherever you may be in the uh, supply chain development process. Well, thank you. Um, apparently, we have uh, okay. Let me see. We have a question box popped up. Well, people are actually commenting and saying thank you. Uh, however, we have not received any single question as such as yet so far. So I guess uh, we might as well conclude it here with a note. Once again, thank you very much, Mr. Sully. I would like to thank you on behalf of the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship. And thank you all of those who participated in this webinar. Uh, and... Uh, uh, well, we have one question, so it just popped up, so let me go ahead and straight away, if you don't mind, I'll ask from Mr. Mark Stora. The question is, how would a company begin to fix the unfixable, unfixable if we have a problem in the supply chain? Well, uh, this, is, this is common. Um, we certainly, I mean, I certainly see it practically every day. Uh, <laughs> And the unfixable, I don't, I actually don't know the, the term unfixable. I, I mean, I understand it, but, but uh, pretty much uh, anything can be fixed. I mean, uh, of course, I can't fly the, the supplies to the moon and back, but I mean, the, the, uh, the almost always at the root of the issues are the, are the definitions of the specifications and the, the um, I call it demand management on the part of the end user. Uh, like my example of no fat butter, I mean, how do we find this that's unfixable that doesn't exist? Uh, we can't create this from from nothing. Uh, so we we have to manage, incorporate within the process uh, the need to manage the expectations and the demand side of the equation. I think so often I've seen supply chain management organizations who simply take an order from another party, maybe they're more senior ranking in the organization, and they they say, well, I, you know, I, I want this, I need this, I need it yesterday. Uh, why aren't you getting it to me? And and then so often uh, there's not a response. This takes active listening, um, active management of of your customer and the rest of the uh, stakeholders in the process. The other side of this, of course, is that the supply chain. We didn't really go deeply into this, but the supply chain supply community, such as the over the water uh, uh, logistics suppliers, uh, are, is, a, is very, very, uh, ha has very, very limited options in many cases between uh, one port to another, between um, uh, on a certain date. I mean, the dates often are not guaranteed, as you know. Uh, and so uh, these these kind of issues, you know, you can't get. How do you get? Uh, we had the, the, the Doha Asian Games. We we had a lot of rain unexpectedly, and so we had to find uh, on short notice actually uh, ten thousand rain parkas 
for the staff uh, to get them there uh, and to get them there within hours. Uh, of course, we, you know, I mean, is it, is it impossible? No, it isn't. I mean, we found them, we shipped them, we got them there, we got them distributed, we got them to customs. And uh, it is possible usually to, to solve. It's better if you can anticipate these things, but we did not anticipate rain in Doha at the Asian Games. Sorry, I went on a bit long. Well, thank you very much. And now we have a couple of questions. So uh, let me go to a caller who has raised his hand. Uh, we have uh, Brother Zain Al Romani. Brother, could you hear us? Please introduce yourself and ask a question. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Uh, good afternoon for everybody. Thanks for the uh, informative uh, presentation. Uh, my question is, do you think the advanced technology can bridge the geographical, geographical gap between the supplier and the end user? I, I didn't hear the entire question. Advanced, uh, whether advanced technology can, uh, I didn't hear gap. the word. Yeah, bridge the gap, the geographical gap between the supplier and the end user. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, this is we're doing this um, frequently because at the end of the day, really, we're we're simply trying to get a product from from uh, a supplier who has it at point A to the end user who needs it at point B, and. Uh, this is all this is all incorporated within management models that identify uh, uh, that 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 need and immediately incorporate it within the within the uh, uh, the ordering process the the requisition process I should say for sure. Well, thank you very much, Brother Zane. Have to, have to reach reach out to, to incorporate that that end users uh, to to, to uh, incorporate the end users need within the model, and that frequently is not done. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Zane, uh, for your question, uh, and let me move to another. Question we have from Brother Wajahat Abdullah Wajahat. The question is, how do companies manage supply chain resiliency and measure risk index? To be honest, this really requires a, the, the supply chain resiliency question is a very, very important one. It's often incorporated within the uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, in a proper supply chain management uh, model, um, uh, along with uh, reliability, responsiveness, uh, maybe responsiveness incorporates uh, resiliency, uh, but flexibility, flexibility costs, uh, even asset management. Uh, The, 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 these are these are key performance indicators, and they really need to be uh, first of all defined, secondly measured, and the measurement needs to be turned around into uh, evaluation of performance that has some effect on the ultimately on the compensation of the, the of the partners. The, 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 problem, the challenge is that really, at the end of the day, I mean, we're looking from outer space when we say this, but at the end of the day, everyone in the supply chain has to win or has to be, has to be uh, satisfied. I hope, that, I hope that addresses your question. Well, thank you. Let me move to another question from Mr. Graham Gourney. The question is, I work with an organization where procurement, supply chain, and manufacturing are not integrated under one head, system policy, etc. Presumably, best practices is to have these separate functions 
all under one integrated function? Your thoughts? Yes, this is uh, this is commonly the case, uh, and and there are reasons for the separation, organizational separation as well. Uh, what what we commonly construct is a is a, uh, a, a something like a committee or a a, uh, a council that incorporates these elements, uh, uh, and often this is a pretty high-level committee, depends on the, on the, the organization's product or service, and it depends a bit on the, um, on, on the markets that it serves, but uh, uh, one way to solve it is definitely with a council or committee, I don't know what term you may use for this, but it, it it has, as its membership, it has uh, the 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 uh, procurement, supply chain, manufacturing parts. When I worked in the menu, when I uh, managed uh, the, uh, the the facility function at uh, a large manufacturing company in the U.S., this was very very critical because supply. First of all, procurement is critical due to the cost of the product. Logistics is also critical. In this case, it was a defense contractor uh, in the U.S. Uh, it also, uh, uh, and the manufacturing was very, very high tolerance uh, driven. And so we, we really had very high specifications, some overlay criteria for the sources of supply. and. Uh, and, and the procurement, uh, we, we link the procurement with the manufacturing and the supply chain logistics in the form of a, of a council that had a regular charter, uh, sorry, a charter and a regular schedule of, of discussion. Actually, it, this, this particular case, uh, that, that group uh, was headed by a very senior operational executive, and uh, and it also uh, was the body that defined the policies and procedures, and then evaluated the performance of the larger uh, of, the, of the of the bigger jobs as well as the various key suppliers in the in the extended supply chain. Thank you. And we have one last question from uh, Mr. Bravant Islam. The question is how to manage risk pooling within the supply chain? I believe it's some sort of supplementary question we already asked. For. Did you say risk pooling? Yes, sir. It is uh, risk pooling. How to manage risk pooling within the supply chain? I'm not. I'm not uh, knowing what that. Means. Could you? Could uh, he? Could he please explain the the term pooling, risk pooling? Uh, Brother Bravan, you posted this question in the question box. So if you could, uh, well, let me try to see if I could unmute him and if he can speak. Mr. Mr. Marwan, Brother Marwan Islam, can you hear us? And could you? Would you like to elaborate risk pooling? Uh, unfortunately, uh, we cannot have an audio with him. Uh, well, uh, I guess then we let us call it off then. Uh, so once again, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Soli, for this wonderful presentation. And thank you very much, all of those who participated in this language, uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, we are recording this webinar, which will be uploaded on our mild community next couple of days. Uh, uh, with that note, uh, uh, any concluding remarks that you would like to give, Mr. Shelley, before we dismiss out? Uh, no, I have nothing to add, uh, except I would, uh, I, again, I very much appreciate this opportunity. There are uh, additional parts of this that we could explore in more depth uh, if anybody wishes to.
contact me. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that we uh, that we can organize that properly, and uh, I'd be happy to have a individual discussion as well. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much once again, and we'd like to conclude and dismiss out. So you all have a good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're calling from. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship, MILE.